Hi, I'm Kevin Scott with 100 Huntley Street, and I am so excited to be here today with Dr. Caroline Leaf, who is a cognitive neuroscientist. She has some incredible theories on learning, and I can't wait to hear more about what you do. Caroline, you. welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so good to be here. Thank so, you. So tell us about kind of what you do, what your area of interest is, and this new book you've written. Well, I'm a cognitive neuroscientist, as you said, so I've spent 30 years researching the human brain and how, specifically how the mind controls the brain. Because when we think of brain, we immediately, people kind of mix the mind and the brain together when they're separate. So I, um, I basically have studied the science of thought and how our thinking can change the brain, which is called neuroplasticity, and um, basically how our mind works, the science of thought, and helping people deal with their thinking, dealing with their emotions, learning more effectively, just helping people realize that we really do have have an amazingly love, power, and sound mind, you know, how God has created us. So it's yeah. all the science and the scripture kind of mixed together, which is quite fun. Well, wow. okay, so you got to take me back a little bit. How do you even get interested in something like this? Well, minds, how people think is fascinating, and that's where, you know, and how people learn, it just fascinated me. So it was something that I was interested in for years. And I didn't want to just do straight medicine because it was just too biological. I wanted to get more into the mind. So that's, that took me down the whole, you know, being a Christian my whole life, it took me down the whole renewing of the mind. What does that mean? What's a thought? And so my research has shown, you know, thoughts are real things. And as you're thinking, your brain is capturing your thoughts and you can change your brain. And we, our brain's what we call neuroplastic, which means our brain can change. So a lot of the research that I've done has been around how no matter what you've gone through, no matter what psychiatric issue, no matter what, traumatic brain injury, you can actually change your brain So, and through your mind, so because your brain simply does what your mind tells it to do. So were you interested in this even as a child? I think you say you're a self professed uh, science nerd, you're, you're okay yes. with that title? Oh, absolutely, no totally, from, from very young it always fascinated me, the whole science and science of the mind and research and so it's been, been pretty much my life. Okay, and your newest book is called? Switch on your brain. <laughs> Switch on your brain, and in Switch on your brain, you go through a process, uh, five steps. T tell us a little bit about that and how you walk through it. Okay, well, basically thoughts are real things. So as we're thinking, we, like right now, we're pr talking about things. So we've got information going through, that we're receiving going through our brain. And that becomes, as we are thinking about that with our mind, our intellect and our will and our emotions, we, we turn that into a physical thought. So our thoughts, thinking becomes a physical thought. And that process of how our thinking becomes a physical thought um, is what I've researched. And, and it, your brain goes through, or your mind, and it's reflected in your brain, goes through five major processes. Obviously there's multiple processes, but it can be grouped into five major processes. And from the research, I developed a technique that I used to use with my patients, because I practiced for nearly 25 years and did brain research for 30 years. We still, I still do brain research. I don't practice anymore, because I travel the world teaching this stuff now. But basically the technique enables a person to be able to get their mind ordered and under control. And where your mind goes, your brain simply follows. So if you train your mind to be in order, your brain will actually follow the process, which is exactly what the Word of God says. Wow. So, so uh, it's so interesting to hear you talk about things in this way and the science of it and be a person of, of faith. A lot of times people think that those two don't go together. What, what do you say to people who say, well, you can't believe in, in science first and then also it, that it works for your faith? Well, it's always, it's always an, um, a, a find, I find it an crazy because if we think of it God and people ask me that all the time they always it's like this there should be a separation I said but they they can't be a separation because God made everything so science is simply a description of the everything so science is just a tangible way of understanding how we as humans function and how the world functions so it's a description of creation it's a description of who we are it's a description of the physical so it's the most natural thing because it needs to reflect the spiritual and that's exactly what research is actually showing all the research is actually catching up with with the Word of God which is quite interesting so it's a natural connection it's not the separation that people see so for you, the science doesn't hurt your faith, but it helps your faith. It actually builds. It's a tangible way of understanding how faith works. So for example, if we talk about renewing the mind. That's a concept all of us have been exposed to, but what is it really? Science actually shows you how to do it and what it is. And, and that's in that book, that the latest book that uh, we mentioned. I talk about a 21-day brain detox where you use the five-step technique. And so it's science helping us to actually use our neuroplastic brain and change our mind and fix up issues in our life.
basically. Okay, that's fascinating to me. Tell me about this 21-day brain detox. So most people um, have been told or have read somewhere that um, a habit is formed in 21 days. But that's not really correct, but the science of 21 days is correct. A habit is formed over three cycles of 21 days. So it actually takes 63 days minimum to build a thought into your mind that becomes something that becomes a habit. Um, so 21 days, however, scientifically, um, to, to take something from nothing to something. So if you're starting to learn like a new way of doing something, or you're learning some new schoolwork, or you're learning a new, you want to have a new a mindset of a certain new way of ha um, operating, it's something new, it's going to take 21 days to, your brain goes through a phase of building the memory. So the first 24 hours that you hear something, like at this conference, everyone's learning something new, the, the, they'll be building short-term memory over 24 to 48 hours. Most people kind of stop there, but your memory will actually denature and disappear. When I say memory, a memory is a thought. Thoughts and memories are the same thing. So if we don't push on for at least for a minimum of 21 days, the short-term memory just goes away. By day three, things start changing in your brain, so that over a period of 21 days, various different things happen in your brain. By the 21st day, you actually have a, a physical thought built in your brain. So if you don't push that long, it goes away. So the 21-day detox talks, uh, takes those principles of how the technique of how to build a thought into the time frame of 21. And once the thought is built, you have to, um, you have to stabilize it. It's called automatization in science. And that takes another two, two cycles of 21 wow. days. And then so the book, you walk people yes, through the, the process. Yes, the details in and, there and, and the and science behind it. it and wow. So it's also interesting when you talk about science to have a, a female that's so interested in it. A lot of times we're even thought in, in school that well, maybe boys do more science. So what do you think about getting girls more involved in science? And how do you encourage young women to, to be more interested in this space? Well, I think it's uh, women bring a unique angle as men bring a unique angle. So it's just two different angles. You know, we're equally as intelligent. And I've done research in the male-female brain as well. So we're equally as intelligent. And women just approach science from a different angle. And science is someone interested in botany, someone interested in designing, someone interested in fashion. That's all science because all of those have some business, whatever. Everything, science actually is a very broad category. We tend to limit the word science to maths or, you know, it's in the laboratory or brain research, but science actually incorporates every field that describes everything physical. So if you look at it from that angle, women are very involved in science. There's just maybe the more we need to get women more involved in maybe the mathematical, quantum, classical, that kind of science, there's not as many women involved. But my encouragement is where, where, your, where your interest lies, follow your passion, because when you follow your passion, wherever it is, that's what's going to grow your brain, and that's when you're going to be happy. Yeah. So. That's cool. As far as getting people excited about it at a very young age were you even interested in science as you came up through even grade school before you ever got to yes, university? Yes, it, it was an interest right from day one, finding out how things work, the detail behind things, the logic of processes and uh -huh. strategies and things. For parents who have children who may be interested in this, how can they help their children uh, better understand or be able to pursue things that they're passionate about? Well, basically, and, um, it's wherever you, um, when, when we have a direct targeted, focused um, mind, when we teach a child to learn in that way, um, very early on, a child's gift will start manifesting. Um, I have also got materials and things that help parents to do this kind of, to be able to actually work with a child and understand how they're thinking. Because a gift is actually how you think. So the way that you think, the way that you process your perception, um, how you perceive things, how you see things, that kind of pushes one in the direction that you're interested in. So if a parent can look at their child, not through, not from who they are, but as a unique standalone individual, because we're all unique, they'll start seeing things that they didn't see before. And when they do, then that's how they can just encourage. It's very important to not think you should be this, but to actually see what is it? How do you think? What is the, what's going on in your head? And, and then encourage that and direct that and it's follow the child. If you follow the child, they will very quickly lead you in the direction that they want to go in. Their yeah. interests are there, laid down within them. Dr. Leaf, you have um, an ability to take very complex topics and break them down for a lot of times very large audiences. Yeah. What's your favorite topic that you talk about to groups? I talk about so many different things. Um, like today, Catalyst was talking about change and what that looks like in the brain and you know, um, so there's so, I mean, that's, it's a great one to, to, to help people realize that they can control their brain, that there's hope, that you're not stuck in 
the whole, for example, talking about mental health, you know, this mental ill health is the number one problem in the world today. And to show people and, and, and help them realize that you're not a victim of your biology and you're not a victim of, of any, you, that you, you, you can overcome that, you're a victor over and above your biology, that you don't, con you know, your brain doesn't control you, you control your brain. So that's a very interesting, that opens so many avenues. Today I was showing that concept in terms of change, in terms of how change takes place and how when you're desperate to change, your brain literally responds to your mind. So as you desperate, your brain almost changes in how the neurotransmitters flow and it becomes almost like fertile. Desperation creates like a fertilized brain for change. Yeah. So that's, that's what, there's so many. I love, I love anything to do with the mind and science and showing people that you can, you're not hopeless, you, you've, got, you've got power in your mind, yeah. like it says in the word. You mentioned a lot of resources that you have for people. So if somebody is watching and they don't have the opportunity to hear you speak, how can they find some of these resources? Our website, we've got an online store, so they go to drleaf.com, so leaf like on a tree, so D-R-L-E-A-F.com. And there's a whole lot of stuff, and I have a TV show, and there's all kinds of downloads that will help them as well. Okay, and if they're going to go to your site, what's if somebody is just new to the space, what would be the first thing you'd tell them to do? It's so individual, but you know, the latest book tends to draw people's attention because it's the latest book, but then you know, each of my books covers different areas. So what we find is people start where they read through the, it's difficult to say because it depends on what they're interested in. Is it for children or is it for their own detoxing of their mind or is it for learning? So it depends on where people's interest lies. So it's and difficult for me to say which because I love all of them. <laughs> and there's something for everybody on that side. Oh yes, we have a huge, you know, it's, everyone's got a brain. And everyone's got a mind, so it's you know it's it's that's people are and people are very interested in themselves, and they're very interested in self-development. And people are also very tra and, and we live in a world that's very demanding, and as we know, and people are very a lot of people are very traumatized. Mental ill health is is increasing, not decreasing, which it shouldn't be, because we have the power to actually change that. So. Mm. These, yeah, people are very interested in this topic. I think it's fascinating. We spend so much time learning about other things that I think it's important to stop and take time to, to, take time to learn about ourselves Absolutely. and what we do. So thank you so much for being with us it's today. My pleasure. Hope people check out the resources. Thank you.